approaching a stream, the first thing I like to do is I like to get familiar with my surroundings. Now that sounds really strange, but you want to look at the banks, you want to look at the water, you want to do a little bit of pan sifting, whatever you need to do to, to kind of get an idea of one, are there any immediate latent hatches going on? That might not be the case. In the case of today, obviously you're looking around and I'm not seeing too much. It's about 45, 50 degrees today. The water temperature is a little uh, cooler than that. However, because of the recent increase in temperature from mid-February blizzard to a little bit warmer, nice, really record-breaking February temperatures, I know there's something going to be going on. My first bet, though, because it is very cold, is to decide to choose some midge pattern. But above that, I'm going to throw what I believe to be very successful at this time of year is a stone uh, fly pattern. Now this stone fly pattern is weighted because I'm going to do some tight line nymphing on these tight bends and things, but that brings us to our second point. After we've decided what we're going to actually use because of the situation, because of the temperature, you've already gotten your reading, and you've checked you know, other similar situations and things in your journal log that you've taken every fish you catch. Now it's time to pick a spot. So the first thing I like to do is I like to find uh, some nice pools and things or some riffles or some runs. Right now, because it was so cold and now it's really warm, I'm not going to look so much in the riffles. I'm going to look somewhat more in the runs and some of the deeper holes. Now, because the stream is very small, typically most of the larger fish or fish capable of taking a fly will hold in holes. So. I'm going to go to each one of these bends, take a look, and see what I can find. So we found a nice hole. It's on a bend, it gets deep, cut banks, really fishy. So what I'm going to do is use my selected flies that I thought would work, and I'm going to flip it up on top of the run, and with cold weather, coldish weather, it really is beneficial to not just fish the thing 12 times through. If you get really good drifts, then you can be cautious and only fish it a few times. But whenever we're solo out here and we're not fighting for territory, it's going to be up to your call whether or not you want to fish it. If you know there are fish in there from previous experience, then continue to fish it but, and change flies. But if you're not sure, prospecting for trout is really easy to do with a few good nymphs and a few good dries. strategy for water you're not familiar with is to approach it from downstream, meaning that the fish are going to be looking upstream, because that's the way they're designed, and you're going to cast your flies in front of and drift through the fish. This allows you, especially on small streams, to get a lot closer as well as to get low with your profile 
and get closer to the bank to make easier casts. Dissecting the water becomes much easier by doing this. I really recommend this right in the rain uh, notebook. It's waterproof, it's, uh, it's made from recycled materials. You can literally write on it and it will not, the, the paper doesn't get gross and crinkly and crumply. And so it allows you to write on it and I keep this right in my back, in my pack with me and a mechanical pencil to, to avoid the tip breaking off. There you have it guys. It's currently now raining pretty uh, steadily. When you fish in a front like that, really good bite on subsurface stuff like stones or mayfly nymphs early in the season like this midges and and small or get you know gaudy stoneflies work really well I'm heading out if you like the video give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel of course until next time guys catch you guys on the flip side tight lines and we're out <laughs>